So, you're probably all wondering why this video is shorter than, say, 50 minutes. Well, it's because I had a little issue with editing, and I lost half of the video. For some reason, it wouldn't save no matter what I did, so it's just gonna have to be... My ranking is just going to have to be two smaller videos instead of one big video, which I'm really not happy about. I really wanted it to just be one big video, but life's a bitch sometimes. Uh, anyway, regardless of the editing problems, I do hope you all still enjoy this video. So I'm just going to shut up now and let the past recordings of me that didn't go away... Uh, Continue on. See ya. Well, it's that time of year again. Time to give my thoughts on every single Death Battle Season 9 episode. Like last year, there'll just be a quick summary of my thoughts while the thumbnails appear on screen because I am too lazy to do all of that work just for, a, like, what, a half an hour video? Um, but unlike last year, I'm going to be ranking them from worst to best based on my personal opinion. Let me restate that. My personal opinion. Let me tell you though, this was very hard because you had to. I had to figure out which episode goes where and they're all so good I couldn't figure that out but I think I got a good ranking that I agree with so let's get into that. Also, sorry this took so long I kind of forgot about it when I got sick. Feeling better now, and I'm ready to record. Um, also, also, Lucara Boy is doing his own video, but that will be out, I don't know when, but if when it comes out, I will put the link in the description so you guys can just go watch it after this one. But please watch it after this one. You are one ugly motherfucker. SHUT YOUR BITCH ASS! Boba Fett vs. John Yauche is definitely an episode, alright? Yeah, after thinking about it for a few months, I definitely think it's safe to say that this episode is the weakest out of all 17 of Season 9 episodes. Now, that's not to say it's bad. I'd go so far as to say that every episode this season has been really good. This one... It's just very bland. There are some things I like. The melee clashes with their bladed weapons is cool. I like them using a lot of their gadgets. The staff fight is great. Boba cauterizing his own wound with a lightsaber is raw as hell. And the arm cutting scene is a really good shot, despite it making no sense since Boba has 360 degree vision, and he also used that 360 degree vision in the first place to see John Yatcha, so why didn't it work this time, Fett, you complete tosspot? Maybe I don't like the arm cutting scene. Oh, and let's not forget the sheer stupidity of John Yatcha. He stabs a tree without any reason to, stops swinging his scythe despite Boba Fett being right freaking below him, and setting up a countdown for his self-destruction, giving Boba ample time to get away. John, if you wanted him dead, and let's be real, you did want him dead, why did you set up the countdown, you idiot? Why not just detonate it and take him out as well? I mean, it's not like it matters since he survived it point blank and he... And despite the analysis saying that he freaking can't. Outside of that, the episode just doesn't really give me anything. The analysis is just there. The track is okay. It's more of an environmental one. And it's... Eh. It's fine, I guess. It's just an okay episode with nothing that really stands out a lot. Unlike John Yauch's Dreadlocks. Seriously, sometimes they flop all over the place, and other times they're as stiff as a tree trunk. Light as a feather, stiff as a board. Boba's voice actor, Cameron Nicod, does a good job with him, but this is easily his weakest performance in my opinion. Especially with the ugly motherfucker line. Like, not only does it not make sense for Boba to say, but it just feels like it's been thrown in there for the sake of being a reference. I think something better like, I've seen worse. Would have been way more in character for Boba Fett. Overall, episode is just kind of okay. Wait! Are you not using magic? Nope. Ooh boy, this may be one of my more controversial takes. 
Deku vs. Asta is an episode I have nothing else to say on. The analysis was boring, the fight was... Okay, the fight was pretty good. What the hell happened to Black Whip? I like the callback to All Might vs. Mike Guy, and the death sucks. The voice acting is good, I like a lot of Asta's lines despite him just kind of being there. And the track slaps harder than a cat on steroids. Literally, that's all I have to say on it. This episode is just so... Nothing to me. Probably even more so than Boba Fett vs. John Yatcha. Only reason this one is higher is because the animation is better and, once again, the track slaps. Also, I'd like to give a big thank you to all the Black Clover fans for basically deterring me away from the series forever. Because of your attitude towards the freaking throwaway line about luck and also Asta becoming Zoro from One Piece, yes, that actually happened, I'm not kidding. Not the Zoro thing, but people actually getting mad about Asta doing that. I don't think I'll ever want to check out the series now. Seriously, this waiting period was just hell. People on Twitter lost their minds over the luck line, and I know that a majority of the fandom is probably really chill, but frankly, I'm not pushing my luck. Yes, I'm ending it off that way. Suck it up. Jason vs. Michael is still a really good episode. But, I'll admit, it got a little worse on a rewatch. The analysis was pretty fun. I like them bringing up all the weird and wacky shit that these movies have done. They fucking brought up Buster Rhymes and Michael's analysis. That shit is funny and you can't tell me otherwise. The editing is also on point, but let's be real, that's standard for an episode of Death Battle nowadays. Oh, man, I just wish the fight was a lot better. Now, it isn't bad, but there's just really nothing that interesting. I mean, that's expected because it focuses primarily on a random guy who Nemesis is called Joe Victim, so I'm gonna call him that. And, I mean, there are some cool things I like. The Blackest Eyes, Devil Eyes line is really good. The atmosphere is honestly the best in the season. I like the Dead by Daylight reference when Michael hits Joe Victim in the back. Jason leaving the knife in the tree that Mikey stabbed him on is a really cute attention to detail. And the death is freaking awesome, as is the build-up to it. But... I just wish we focused a little more on Jason and Michael. And that we got a Dr Jason crotch shot scene. I don't care that it breaks the immersion, I fucking wanted it to be included because it's funny. Overall, Good episode, just really wish it focused on Jason and Michael fighting. That's like the biggest complaint I have, so I'm going to be repeating myself net more. So, yeah. I was fucking joking! For starters, I want to thank Nemesis for that wonderful, wonderful voice clip. Also, I won't go as in-depth with this next one since I released a review on it and my thoughts haven't had changed at all. The episode is still pretty good. Most of the stuff they included didn't really stand out to me outside of the Super Saiyan headbutt, the bluff Kamehameha, the fist bump at the end, and Super Saiyan 4 just in general since that form is the GOAT. Dragonauts is a great track, the analysis is pretty good, it brings up a lot of Xenoverse and Heroes stuff that doesn't get used in the actual fight which really sucks, that really could have made the fight a lot better. Also the animation can be very stiff at some points, but other than that, it's an okay episode. It's kind of underwhelming for a season finale, but it's it's still pretty okay. Presentation! Wanda vs. Zatanna is an episode that I have grown a much bigger appreciation for, surprisingly enough. It introduced me to Zatanna, who is now one of my favorite female characters of all time, and in my top 10 favorite DC characters of all time. And considering that my favorites in DC are characters like Wally West, Kyle Rayner, Superman, and the man, the myth, the legend, Booster Gold. Yeah, it's quite a big honor. For me, at least. Wanda is... Definitely a character I have flipped my opinion on since the last time I talked about this episode. Mostly because of all the MCU slash Wanda stands who treat Wanda like a fucking messiah when she isn't even that good of a character. I know this mainly applies to the MCU version of Wanda, but it still doesn't give me hope about the comic versions, and considering that comics nowadays might as well be as mid as the MCU itself. 
We're gonna use Zeb Wells Spider Man. Well, that one's just plain bad, but. Anyway, so yeah, Wanda's character in this episode is honestly super boring and uninteresting. The only real moments of character I like is when Wanda is being a sarcastic bitch to Zatanna when she goes back on her two bit sources line. Later on, she destroys the universe for no reason, really showing off how much of a bitch you are, eh? And she has an emotional, uh, an emotional outburst after Zatanna pelts her with more universes, which is honestly a pretty funny scene. I like it. But she doesn't just, she just doesn't hold a candle to Zatanna in this episode. Zatanna just exudes this aura of a performer, and I really like that. She's definitely more about presentation than showing off raw physical power, unlike Wanda. Speaking of which, the presentation line is my favorite bit in this animation, and it leads straight onto the scene where we're... Uh, Zatanna reaches to the audience to give them a high five. Oh yeah, and the death is also really good. Again, showing off Zatanna's focus on presentation by sewing Wanda in half like a magician is just really cool. As is the hand-drawn animation at the end. Um, what else? I like Superman punching Wanda in the face, that's pretty cool. The entire superhero fight is kind of lame and under interesting, but it's creative, I guess. The voice acting is good. Laura, Lauren Mayfield does a great job with Zatanna and Cassandra. Oh god, um, Cassandra Waladislava. I am very sorry if I mispronounced that. I mean, no disrespect. Um, she also does good with Wanda. But as much as I just praise this episode right now, unfortunately, it is another case of missed uh, animation potential. We don't really get any crazy reality warping feats outside of Zatanna reaching past the aspect ratio, which is cool, I'll give them that, but I just wish we got more of that. Not this cape shit superhero fight. As much as I... Oh, I'm, I'm okay with that scene, I wish we got more warping reality instead of just summon Superman, punch Wanda in the face, summon Hulk, punch Superman, summon Wonder Woman, punch Hulk, or whatever. I, 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 I can't remember. I'm too lazy to just go by the whole scene. Oh, track as well. Spellaholic, Spellaholics Synonymous is also a really good track. That's all I have to say about it, really. This episode is good, but could have been a lot better. Is that me? Is that me stronger than me? I'll Kill me! Thor vs. Vegeta is a good episode, and that's really about it. Okay, in all seriousness, this episode kicks all kinds of ass. The analysis ain't winning any awards for the greatest in the entire series, I mean, it is just kind of okay. But, the editing is good. More so in Vegeta's analysis than Thor's, but it's all pretty good. And surprisingly, the cutaway gags aren't awful. Boomstick using key is just kind of there. But the axe joke is really funny to me. I like how Boomstick tries so hard to hype up the axe. It's a cute moment, and it really shows off his appreciation for all types of weapons. I do wish they showed an example of Vegeta using Hakai, because he can do it. He's done it before in the manga. And I only know this because I saw a video by Carthus Dojo going through the entire Granola arc, and in that arc, Vegeta used Hakai. But they never show him doing that, so I can understand why people are questioning why they decided to include Hakai. The animation, then... Wow. It is really good. The 3D background looks spectacular. It's bright, very colorful, and very pleasing on the eyes. The sprite work is also really good. The effects on the key blasts look great, and the hand-drawn stuff, oh my god, it is beautiful. Ultra Ego Vegeta, opening his eyes after Thor decks him in the face with his hammer, has a surprising amount of impact. Like, seriously, how does that have more impact than the entirety of Metal Sonic vs. Zero? The voice acting is... Also good, to an extent. Nick Landis does a great job with Vegeta, no surprise there, he's been voicing the character for a while, and his final flash legit gives me chills every time I hear it. But Jonah Scott as Thor? 
I don't know what it is, but he just doesn't give a very he doesn't give a very high energy performance. It's very low energy. I like his no fear line, and that's about it. And his Heaven's Wrath line is very underwhelming. Especially when paired up with that pitiful attempt at a God Blast. Seriously. When Thor uses the God Blast, it does fuck all. It doesn't even destroy the cliffside. But you know what? Despite that, the ending is still really good. Vegeta's final flash is godlike, both in terms of delivery and spectacle. And then Thor grabs Vegeta by the face. It's a surprisingly good fake out. The music even cuts out for a bit. Kind of ruined by Thor quoting the MCU. It's stupid and makes no sense since the final flash enveloped his entire body. Then he uses Mjolnir to blow Vegeta's mind. And then when all is said and done, he gives a roll as a hell war crime. War cry. Why did I say war crime? That's not in the script, David. I'm sorry. But it is sick. Overall, I do really like this episode. Oh man, I didn't even get to the track. Princess of Pride is great. Easily top 10 track of the season. Definitely one of the best this, this season. Hell, I'd go so far as to say it's one of the best in the entire show. Black Adam vs. Apocalypse is a really damn good episode. But it's one that I have surprisingly little to say on. It's a good episode, with a good analysis that gives us a good rundown of the characters, and that's really about it. The fight is also really fun and entertaining. Yeah, I know, it is more cape shit, but overall, the stuff they do is really fun. Adam flying around Kondok has a lot of speed to it, and then we see him. The boy. A fake ellipse. <laughs> this joke will never die for me. Accept it. I like Adam getting swarmed by a bunch of Apocalypse's army and then blasting them away with the Yellow Lantern Ring with after those sick-as-hell line deliveries from both Wolf Williams as Apocalypse, who I have warmed up to over the few months, and Cameron Nicod as Black Adam. Great voice deliveries overall. I like them fighting so hard that they destroy p a piece of the moon. Oh, and before I forget, I finally understand why Adam only created a yellow, a yellow tiger instead of Apocalypse's greatest fear. It's because that's all he did with the yellow lantern ring, so... That's nice, I guess. It's comic accurate. Giant Apocalypse is cool, and the death is also cool, but Adam just... Giving up makes no sense since he still has his powers. Oh well. At least the track is good. Fallen Gods is a really good rap track, which is something I don't uh, say often because I'm not a fan of rap. But the lyrics, I'm powerful, I punch the best, will never not be funny. <laughs> Overall, it is a good episode. But it's not a 10 out of- it's not a top 10 episode for me. It's still pretty good though. I like it. I rewatch it a lot. Hey, that was part one of my season nine ranking. Again, I am very, very sorry for um, the fact that this video has to be in two parts. It was a hell to make, and then I lost half of it. So, because it wouldn't save. For some reason, I tried to save it but it wouldn't save, and then I lost half of it, and I don't know how to get it back. But it's here now, or like the first part is, second part will be coming out in a bit, I just gotta get that uploaded. So, yeah. I really hope you enjoyed, for the final ten, that those, those are, for the final, for part two, that's gonna be like the top ten ranking for me, for like the last ten episodes. So... I do really hope you all enjoy these videos. I'm, um, again, very sorry. I will try to make sure that this doesn't happen in the future. Uh, but, uh, yeah. That's really all I have to say. I will see you when part two comes out. Which is gonna be in a couple of minutes. Maybe an hour at best. <laughs>